Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we gather to celebrate a momentous occasion for eight members of the class of 2020 as they graduate from the United States Air Force Academy. As a reminder, if you have not already done so, please silence all cell phones and electronic equipment. And in accordance with social distancing guidelines, you can remove your masks while you're seated. Please stand for the arrival of the official party, the playing of honors, the national anthem, and the invocation. say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the Senior Airman Diaz, I would like to welcome Chaplain Captain Atchison with today's invocation. It's my privilege to open today's ceremony in prayer. I invite you to join me. Lord God Almighty, we come into your presence at this joyful hour to give you thanks for the gift of these men and women and to ask your continued blessing upon them. Thank you for instilling in them these past four years tremendous knowledge and skill, not only to graduate from the academy, but more, to serve and lead our air and space forces for years to come. Thank you especially for forging in them the gift of perseverance. Perseverance through countless hours of study, through sleepless nights and early mornings. Perseverance through the dark hours when fear and doubt, disappointment and loss seemed to win the day. You granted them the strength to overcome, to press on in hope, to sacrifice self, and to push through to this moment, the joy of victory. Today, they cross the finish line of their cadet careers and become officers. God, thank you for the sweetness of this success. Thank you for the friends, family, teachers, coaches, commanders, and trainers with whom they share this success. Their support was indispensable. As these lieutenants move ahead in service, Lord, we ask your continued grace upon them. Grace them with safety. Bless them with hearts which seek to not to be served, but to serve and to lay down their lives daily for those in their command. 
Help them see their careers not as opportunities to further itself, but to promote the interests of others. Finally, give them joy as they embrace the high calling of service to the cause for freedom and the pursuit of peace. We ask all this in your holy and gracious name. Amen. Thank you, Captain Atchison. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is an honor to stand before you on such a very special occasion for you and for the Robert Bob Hoover class of the Air Force Academy. I'm Dr. Hal Taylor, Deputy Head for Student Academic Affairs and Academy Registrar, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this graduation and commissioning ceremony for Tyler Bellew, Kyle Bundesman, Stephen Lamoureux, Eric Long, K. Alohi Lani Mahi Lyons, Denise Sozi, Megan Weld, and Trevor Whiteside. Thank you for being here, sharing in this very special occasion, and please feel free to take photos throughout today's ceremony. At this time, I'd like to introduce our distinguished guests. Please hold your applause until all introductions have been made. The Superintendent, Lieutenant General Jay Silveria, the Commandant of Cadets, Brigadier General Michelle Edmondson, the Dean of the Faculty, Brigadier General Linnell Latendra, the Athletic Director, Mr. Nathan Pine, and the Executive Director of Athletics, Ms. Jennifer Block, Representing the legacy class of 1970, Brigadier General Kurt Emery, United States Air Force, retired. Now, General Silveria with words for our graduates. I still think we should applaud for all of those guests. Thank you. <laughs> Well, good afternoon. It's really an honor to be here, and, uh, and congratulations to all of the graduates. Uh, there's, I don't know, what, 60 or so people in the room, and we're spread out in the, in the middle of COVID, and, uh, and it is certainly odd uh, to, to look around the audience like this, but uh, let's, let's immediately recognize that it is okay that that is odd, but not any less important uh, for these graduates, for the for the, these graduates of the class of 20, that uh, really is such a remarkable time for this institution. It's a real honor for us to bestow this, uh, the commissioning and the degrees uh, today. So, so thank you all for being here. If, uh, uh, for many of you that are also joining as we're, uh, we're taping and, and streaming in, uh, in other locations, uh, as people will see this, uh, please know for all of the graduates that your classmates, that your friends, that your family that aren't here are here with you and that they are here with you in spirit and they are here to support you in so many ways. I'm certainly so proud of this class, so proud of the class of 20 for all that they have persevered through these months at the institution and all that we have dealt with here at the Air Force Academy. And these graduates should be proud of their accomplishments. So let's take a moment to give a special thanks to all those people that are at home. And some of those people that are watching this, uh, perhaps from a, a kitchen or, a, or a watching on a living room sofa, or perhaps they're, uh, they're watching from a computer, uh, that uh, to all of those parents, families, and friends, we certainly wish that you could all be here with us today. But let me add my thanks for your support for these graduates and for, Air, for our Air Force's newest lieutenants and for your support to the United States Air Force Academy. You're an integral part of what we do here. You're an integral part of their lives, but also an integral part of our military family because your support is vital to their success and vital to the success of our force. You are part of our family. And I know that you're exceptionally proud today and, uh, and we are as well. All of the hard work and the dedication, sometimes there was a little bit of angst and a few tears, but we got there. We got there. 
And everyone who's involved certainly deserves your thanks and well done. So one challenge to the graduates today. There's someone in your life. There's someone that you can recall. Perhaps it was a coach. Perhaps it was a mentor here. Perhaps it was an AOC. Perhaps it was someone back at home. Someone that was integral to you making it to today. And please take that moment to thank them. Please take that moment to write them that card and thank them for your day today. Certainly also to the faculty, the staff, the coaches, the AOCs, the AMTs, every part of the Air Force Academy, this is an exceptionally good day for us. I mean, everything that we do here is so that we can get to today's like today. We do our best for every cadet, for every graduate. Um, we couldn't do it without this entire team from every element across the academy. And moments like this are what we're all here for. The fulfillment of our mission, the culmination of all of the hard work. And it's what we do in our mission to develop leaders in air and space force like the leaders that are here today. So we recognize, graduates, your years of tireless service. We recognize uh, the end of, the, of a dream that, that many of you was long in the making. And you started your journey four years ago. And think about that. You stepped on the footprints at the base of the core values ramp and walked up. And now you're going to join me and many others as graduates and join the long blue line that's now more than 50,000 strong. And a special thanks to the representative of the legacy class and the representative of that long blue line. Sir, thank you for being here. It's truly an honor. And the last several months have really, truly shown what a challenge it was to graduate from the Air Force Academy. Uh, even in the middle of COVID-19, we continued developing these leaders. And in perhaps one of the most difficult environments that the Air Force Academy has ever seen. And you're entering a service that's going to deal with this and the next challenges again and again. And this extraordinary time, you will remember and you will carry with you. It's also not going to be easy from here. But I'm confident that you've gathered the abilities that you need to take on the challenges. You were tested in the classroom, on the athletic fields, in the squadrons. Now you're going to be tested by an enemy. You're going to be tested by an adversary that is also learning and thinking and growing and developing. And you have to outthink, outgrow, and outdevelop an adversary. And we know that you can do it. It's a great honor to speak with you here today, but I have to tell you something about myself. One of the cool things about becoming a three-star general in the United States Air Force is that you gain the ability to see into the future. It's pretty slick. And so this morning I had this small, short vision where I can go fast forward about five years from now. And it's no exaggeration where I can see some of these graduates. I can see Tyler and Steven together over a mission planning table, getting ready to support an operation in a far distant location. I can see the fact that Denise also checked into that same operation to provide some cyber support. And none of that is an exaggeration that all of you graduates will have those moments. And believe me, it will be a lot quicker than you realize. So as you prepare to take the oath of office, I can hope that you can see that your dedication and your commitment paid off and that your development as leaders, your selfless spirit, your commitment to excellence have gotten you to this moment. And we are exceptionally proud of you. But leave today knowing that the modern profession of arms is evolving and changing. And that you are that future that we all are going to count on. Congratulations. Be proud of today. And all the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, General Silveria. To confer the degrees, Brigadier General Linnell Latendra.
Well, good afternoon. As the 11th Dean of Faculty, it is my distinct honor and privilege to be able to, to confer the degrees on these graduates. But before we do, I also want to say congratulations. Welcome. Welcome not only to the long blue line, but welcome to you as members of the profession of arms. You graduates here today span every division with your majors, biology, management, legal studies, civil engineering, and general studies. You have prepared well for the critical thinking and clear communication that is going to be required of you as an officer, as a member of the profession of arms, and the skills that you will need to be successful as pilots, civil engineers, cyber operators, and special warfare operators. Wow, what an amazing group. We know that you are ready to be a leader and to face the challenges that will come your way. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct privilege to present to you graduates of the United States Air Force Academy, Class of 2020. With today's ceremony, the Class of 2020 has grown to a total of 975 total graduates. Your class includes 12 international students, seven who commissioned into other services, 85 who commissioned into our new United States Space Force, and 862 who have commissioned into the United States Air Force. And so, Lieutenant General Severia, it is my distinct honor to say and certify that these cadets have completed the demanding academic, military, and athletic programs required for graduation from this institution and I am pleased to present each as worthy of the Bachelor of Science degree. Thank you, General Latendra. General Silveria, if you would please come forward. Tyler Donald Bellew. Bachelor of Science degree in Management. <laughs> Kyle Nicholas Bundesman, Bachelor of Science degree in biology. Stephen Thomas Lamoureux, Bachelor of Science degree in General Studies. <laughs> Eric Lee Long, Bachelor of Science degree in civil engineering. <laughs> Ke alohi lani kaha nuola mahi lions. Bachelor of Science degree in biology. Denise Nasanga Sozi, Bachelor of Science degree in Legal Studies. <laughs> 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 
Megan Elizabeth Weld, Bachelor of Science degree in biology. Trevor Clark Whiteside, Bachelor of Science degree in General Studies. Thank you. Thank you, General Silveria. Ladies and gentlemen, Brigadier General Edmondson will make some comments, then administer the oath of office. So let me start with congratulations. Um, and congratulations and thank you to the families for all of the support that you've given these graduates to get here today. I really have to echo what the superintendent said about the historic nature of what you have been through to get here today. Um, your class saw the stand-up of a new service. Your class graduated the first officers into the Space Force. Your class sent the lower three classes home in a global pandemic. And you were a part of that. And then we graduated the rest of your class and you stayed with us and you have helped us, every single one of you individually, rebuild this institution and put it back together in the middle of a global pandemic. And I know personally that every single one of you has been a critical part in helping us get to where we are today. And I think because of the extra time you spent with us, you will be better officers and you will be better leaders. You will be better thinkers and you will function in a world of uncertainty even better than your classmates. So personally, from me to you, thank you for what each of you has taken on in the last several months to help us get to where we are. We owe you a lot for our success. And then as your comment on it, wouldn't be fitting if I didn't give you a little bit of advice before we take that oath and let you walk out the door. So a little advice from me to you. Be humble. Make a good first impression at your first assignment. They do tend to stick with you for a while and you only have one chance. Become an expert in your craft. Be the person that everybody else seeks out because they know that you are the expert. Be the le best lieutenant you can be. Find a way to stand out in the crowd without being that guy. Be the one that's willing to raise your hand and volunteer and take on a little bit more. Don't be the guy that punches the clock from 7.30 to 4.30. And then finally, go make it better. Go take on new challenges. Take our Air Force, and if India, any of you end up in the Space Force, take us to the next level. I'm incredibly proud of each of you. It's been humbling to watch what you've done just over the last few months to be a part of this huge lift for the institution. So congratulations. We look excited to all, we're excited for all you're gonna do. And with that, I would ask one more time, are we ready to do this? So please join me in administering the oath. And can I ask that everybody please rise as we do this? I can't see you, Mahi Lyons. I can't see you. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your full name. Having been appointed a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, 
that will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. Congratulations, lieutenants. Thank you, General Edmondson. Please be seated. Please welcome General Kurt Emery, representing your 50-year legacy class of 1970 with some words for today's graduates. I'll try to give a perspective. You're about 22 years old, right, graduates? I, I retired 22 years ago. That gives me, and we have 11 grandchildren, so I can have a different perspective. And let me, three generations here, 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 and the new, the new crop. Congratulations. First, class of 20, we got to spend, and I, I got to attend every event, Jack's Valley, your acceptance parade, nice marching, your commitment dinner, nice manners, your ring dance, and forged in blue. Your parents may not have heard about this. We had a ceremony at the AOG, and Jostens came, and my class, most of them dead, their, their families gave the rings. We had a ring from 59 and several other, other 60s era classes. We are bonded in metal. And you're going to be bonded to a 50-year class, too. Connections. Our first class of the year, they landed on the moon, August of 69. We have a space force now. We had slide rules, if you know what that is. Your iPhone has more power than the lander that landed on the moon. The most unpopular war in modern history was the Vietnam War, when we were cadets. You enter active duty with the longest war in the history of our country, the War on Terror. We had anti-war anti protests, including at the gates. You probably never heard that one. We had protesters at the gates. To get a date at Colorado College or CU or CSU was like impossible. They didn't like us and our hair stood out. The Beatles were popular then. We had the race riots of the 60s while we were cadets. And look at today. We're still in profound political and cultural tensions. The Vietnam War ended in 73. We weren't even captains yet. We had no idea what would be ahead. Are we going to retire having never been in conflict? Well, we weren't disappointed or the opposite. The 79 peace treaty, no more wars in the Middle East, right? The wall fell, no tension, no tension with Russia again. Then came the first Gulf War in 90. So we had 20 years in service. Many of us did serve in Vietnam, but 20 years in service before our first conflict. What will you be like after the war on terror? We have no idea, but you will be ready and you will serve with distinction. Another certainty bonds us, the blue line. And I call it my age, the blue halo. I turn up my hearing aids and I put my glasses on. So we have a different perspective. There'll be weddings, funerals. You'll see each other raise your families. Your children will be friends, and many will attend the Air Force Academy. You'll have KIAs. 
There were 150 graduates killed in, in Vietnam, nine of my classmates. <clears throat> there were 35 POWs. I hope you don't have any. Your classmates will be your dearest, longest lasting friends. It'll make your life richer. It's a marvelous gift to be a Zoomie. You'll go into business together. You'll fund classmate startups. You may be a startup someday. Uh, hopefully you'll fund a political campaign for one of your classmates or more than one of your classmates. What does he expect? <clears throat> what does our country expect of you, of us, to fight and win wars? We fly, we fight, we win. Which leads to officership. You were just commissioned. I'll give you a generational perspective, and we'll talk a little about service. And this is free advice. The Air Force has been historically tribal, clannish. And over my last, over the last almost 40 years, I fought that and many of us have. You'll be a bomber pilot, a fighter pilot, a space professional, even within space. You might be in black space or white space. You'll be in acquisition, but it's all, it's all wrong. We're officers. You, took, you just took the oath of commission. Now what about Zoomies, the blue line? And it is a bright blue line. What about us? What do we provide to the country, the department, and the Air Force? I think we provide something unique, something important. And that is from a perspective of an old guy. We provide salt and we provide light. And it's about character. The character that we share, because we're part of the blue line. In SALT, it's a deep sense of duty. MacArthur, duty, honor, country. It's in our soul, isn't it? Always act, we'll always act honorably, and we always focus on doing what's right, not just in the service. Megan's not going to be commissioned. She's still a Zoom, you're still blue, and you'll do what's right and just and honorable the light that we provide is clarity of purpose. We know what we're supposed to do. You know about leadership. You know it's not about you. It's about those you serve. We are servant leaders, leaders of integrity, and we always strive toward excellence. We do this quietly, purposefully, it's not about pride. It's about the right thing. And we bring those qualities to all of American life. In the service, some of you will serve five, 10, 35. It doesn't matter. We always serve. You'll always be part of the blue line. Lastly, between us, 20 and 70, and I haven't heard Bob yet, but I'm okay with that. The legacy, my class, and this, this is, I represent my class today. We funded the Southeast Asia Memorial in the Plaza of Heroes. We raised the money, we designed it, and we built it. We funded the Memorial Wall. We funded the bar in Doolittle Hall. Gotta have some pride, right? We funded the planetarium. We have an outsized representation on the foundation. We have one of the highest percentage of Sabre Society members, members of any class. We're giving back. There's no pride involved here because it's the right thing to do. So the class of 2070, class of 20, you will be here or a place like this, hopefully not here because of COVID, but you will be here and you will mentor and you will speak like I am for your class. Keep the legacy going. This is the end. Never stop learning, never stop serving. Go Falcons.
Thank you, General Emery. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the singing of the Air Force song and remain in your seats for the departure of the official party. Then take the opportunity to congratulate the newest lieutenants in the United States Air Force. Off we go into the wild blue yonder, climbing high into the sun. Here they come, and the flames run. At them now, give them the gun. Down we dive, spouting our flame from under. Off with one hell of a roar. We live in fame and go down in flames. Nothing can stop the U.S. Air Force. The Commandant of Cadets, General Edmondson. Graduates, one final time. Class of 2020, you are dismissed.